Hey you guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to touch some heavy topics. Some topics that have to do with truth. Now, I will not stand for a lie. I will not stand for what is foolish. And I stand with what's true. And what's true is God's word. Right now, what I see happening, the attack on little kids, the attack on women who are biologically women, and just the whole... Everything that comes with that whole thing, with pronouns, with I can identify as this, as that. Satan is the father of all lies. He is the father of all lies. And this is why I truly believe there is an attack on the children. Because, and why they're trying to make it okay for to give kids you know these um puberty blockers that you know that a five or four three-year-old knows you know that they're if they're born a, a female then you know at that age they they think that they can determine their gender which to me it is so crazy because I personally do not have kids of my own, but I have a niece and I have a nephew. And when I look at my niece, even when I look at the kids that come into the shop that are just out in the park, when I look at these innocent kids who don't know better and who don't understand all the things that are happening in the world, when I look at them, I'm just like, they're so innocent that how could they even know they don't even know what they want to have for dinner most of the night I'm pretty sure but when I look at them and I'm just like so innocent and they are being attacked by teachers and schools um by even the parents Jesus says, if you let one of these little kids stumble who believe in me, it is better for you to have tied a rope around your neck and jump off the ship and fall deep, deep down into the ocean. Because you are leading these kids, innocent kids, down this road because you want to push your agenda on them. You want to push or the, the government, or just this agenda that they're pushing so hard. First of all, the kids don't know better. I, as a woman, I will not, even out of respect, like I am not going to respect a lie. And the fact that we have men trying to be women, competing in sports, wanting to you know come into our space like it's crazy it is so crazy i'm 30 years old and when i think back on this just years ago how things were like i don't think there was ever really an issue y'all made it an issue for yourself and people are just not going to stand for it like right now there is a spiritual war going on that if you know God's word, if you know the Bible, like, you know what's going on. And so, even in, like, the churches, just what they're allowing, like, they're picking and choosing what they want to pick and choose from the Bible. And if they don't like something, then they're just gonna dismiss it. They're just gonna be like, you know... And right now, what I'm seeing a lot of, and I might get a lot of heat for this, but you know what? I honestly do not care because 
I will not stand for a lie. I will not respect a lie. I will stand with truth and I will stand with God's word. And that's it. Like, I'm not going to tolerate a lie. I'm not going to do any of that. And people need to wake up and be ready because right now it's the beginning of sorrows. And I'm going to go ahead. These these chapters and just these scripture that Jesus, when he talks, have just been really pushing me to make this video. I haven't made a video in a while, but it was just like today I had to get into it um, and make this video so that people can wake up um, and just be ready because you are not promised tomorrow if you do not know who Jesus Christ is if you have not repented of your sins and have not been baptized um and you're just like you know what I'll worry about that you know when I'm done you know enjoying life or oh I'll get to that when I feel like it that is a very big dangerous lie that the enemy tells people and a lot of people buy into it because I've known employees who have told me that excuse me who have said you know what I'm just gonna do what I want to do let me kind of get stuff out of my system and then I'll go ahead and um you know get right with God and it's very dangerous um but it's free will it's their choice I mean if if they want to hear the word if they want to accept Jesus into their heart and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior and to want to become a new creation in Christ um it's up to you at the end of the day like I'm not gonna sit here and push it on anybody like I'll say the word, I'll um, share the gospel with whoever, and if they choose to just, which I have shared the gospel with people, and, you know, they hear it, and they just kind of do whatever they want with it, and I don't take it personal, because it is not me that you're rejecting, it is Jesus Christ who you are rejecting, and at the end of the day, at the end of the day, sorry, a little tongue twister, it's up to you on what you want to make a decision on but I do want to read some scripture um both in Matthew chapter 24 verse 4 through 13 um Mark chapter 13 5 through 13 um those are the two big chapters that Jesus and his disciples um where they ask him what they should look out for you know when the end time comes you know when his coming back like what what should they look out for and in Matthew and Mark he does um go into detail about it. and same as well as in Luke um in chapter 20 starting from verse 8 and on um but Matthew and Mark he really digs into it and just some scriptures some verses really hit because I look at the world I look at what you know, people are teaching in church and saying that it's acceptable that you can be gay and a Christ and be be a Christian. Um, you can be on OnlyFans and be a Christian. You you can basically live in the flesh, live how you want to live, um, but still be considered a Christian, which is such a false teaching. And this is what I mean by they want to pick and choose what they want to make acceptable to I guess basically not offend anybody or not be accept, um, accepting of anyone and it's not that we are not accepting of everyone like I love everyone because when I look at people I see that you are someone who was created in the image of God and he died for you as well if you choose to accept him as your lord and savior and repent and turn away from your wicked ways so i pray for people that reject the gospel um 
But like I said, I'm not going to push it on anybody. But when you are living one way, but the word says another, it just, it doesn't work. Um, because there are things in, you know, in the Old Testament, in Leviticus, you have in the Book of Romans, where they do talk about, you know, a man and a man, woman and a woman, it is an abomination to God. It is a sin because God created male and female and he created um, them for each other to, you know, be able to have kids um, and to bring kids into the world. And they'll make the argument, but what about the, the women that can't have kids? Doesn't matter. At the end of the day, they're still a woman, okay? there's still a woman and I don't even that's a whole nother thing but like I'm not going to entertain a lie um and then also you have in the New Testament where Paul the Apostle talks about marriage and he talks about it being between a man and a woman and you know I hear the argument of well love is love God is love and it's like they're using that line to basically just being like you know what God still loves you but it's like whoa whoa God does love the world that he gave his only son why did he give his only son because we are a very sinful we are very sinful we are all sinners and we all come short and there is nothing that we can offer that will be acceptable or be enough and what is enough is jesus christ is the blood of jesus christ and there's nothing that we can offer there are not works that we can do that can be enough like it's just crazy to me and you know i i just this video was just being very put in my heart so i know i'm jumping all over the place but that's it get into reading to some scriptures and um and then we'll get into kind of how that fits into what's like going on in the world um but in matthew um you know the guys are asked the disciples are asking what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached excuse me, and to all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So, this comes into my mind because he says, take heed that no man deceive you, which a lot of people are being deceived, like right before our eyes. They're being deceived in the church. They're being deceived just in the world in general. They're being deceived in sports, especially women's sports, and people are just being deceived, and people have have blinds over their eyes. The enemy has blinds on so many people that they can't even see truth. Their heart is so hardened that they don't even want to open up. They're so just, and when you and when you kind of look at the people that you know, are part of like the LGBTQ that are fighting for like trans kids rights that are fighting for these, 
very evil, wicked things, they all are very angry. Very angry, very have so much hate in their heart. And they're all being deceived. And so we need to stand up to that. We can't just sit back and not stand up to truth. Like, we we can't do that. But when I look at that, I'm just like, these people are so angry. And there's, they're just, they're not happy. And they're fighting for these rights to, you know, have kids make life, life decisions. Okay, these kids like they're you that like there's age for drinking. You have to be 21 to be able to buy alcohol, enter a bar. You, um, I think 17 to get your driver's license, um, and a certain age to buy a gun. Um, let me see what else you have to be 25 or 26 to like even rent a car. Um, so we have these age restrictions on things. But here, you know, that has something that is a very big decision. Like, when you're, you know, when you got to get these things, you have to get. Like, if you want to be able to drive, you have to get your driver's license. You have to pass certain things. Same with buying a gun. You have to pass certain things. Um, if you want to, like, be able to go into nightclubs and bars and buy alcohol, like, you have to take these steps and you have to reach a certain age. But here we are... A, being like you know what a kid can decide if they're born a girl or born a boy like or born yeah if they feel like they're a girl but they're really a boy like these are lies that the enemy puts on people that the enemy because he is the father of all lies and he is here here um to kill steal and destroy and i don't think we can comprehend the wickedness that is going on but it's happening right in front of us when and it starts with the kids like, if you're an adult and you want to make those decisions, like, I pray for you that you come out of this fantasy that you feel like you're this and you feel like you're that. Like, I pray for you um, because God is perfect. God makes no mistakes. And when you are born in your mom, in your mother's womb, he formed you. Like, there was no... There was no, how do I say this? No mistake. And the thing is, is like, okay, you know, if, if a boy wants to play, you know, likes the color pink or a girl wants to go out and play football, like, well, all of a sudden the girl's a boy, the boy's a girl. Like, it's crazy to me because growing up, like, I played football with my sisters with boys in the front yard. Um, you know, I did tomboy things, but my parent my mom and dad were like oh you know I think she's you know I think she's a boy and not a girl like and it's the parents that are being that are the ones that are like making these kids stumble and it is so sad to see that it's crazy it's crazy where we're at in the world but the Lord said all these are the beginnings of sorrows like, it's, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. But we must take heed that no man deceive us. We must stand firm and we must be ready. And not be scared to speak the truth. To speak Jesus' name. Like, we cannot live in fear. Like, we can't. In some schools, they're mandatory. Where they have like a Satan program or something like after school thing in some of the schools like that's okay but watch someone trying to like start you know like an after school Christian you know Bible study or anything that has to do with God's word like it'd be a problem parents would be like out there protesting like it would be a problem and if you still are like you know what I I don't believe there's a God. I don't believe in any of that. Like, it's all a fairy tale. Then explain to me why. I can't remember exactly where it was at, but there was like a Satan con, something like that. 
and you have a pers a girl ripping up the Bible, the Holy Bible. Now, let me ask you something. If it wasn't true, if it wasn't such a threat, why didn't they rip up the Quran? Why didn't they rip up the Book of Mormon? Why didn't they rip up any of these other religious books but the Holy Bible? Satan is not going to attack what's not a threat to him, what's not a threat to his kingdom. He is going to attack, attack what is true. And people need to open their eyes because he is not hiding. And so it just got me thinking, like, I was sitting there watching this woman tear up the Holy Bible. And I'm just like, I'm sitting there. And I'm like... If it wasn't such a threat for her to rip up the Holy Bible, why why didn't she have any of the other books? Why didn't she have the Quran? Why didn't she have the Book of Mormon? Why didn't she have any of these other book religions there and tearing them up? It's not a threat. It is not a threat to Satan and his kingdom at all at all and this is all happening in front of us like we all have phones now like once you share something it gets shared all over the world and so when the gospel is preached where it says let's go back matthew 24 hmm. and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come when you share something on your phone, it gets shared all over the world. Like from here to here to here to here to here, it gets shared. So we all see this stuff. But I want to get into Mark 13 as well. It's, it's actually, it's a beautiful day here in Oregon. It's actually pretty warm in my car. So good thing I don't wear makeup no more. That would suck. <laughs> Anyway, so Mark 13, we have 5 through 13. And it's kind of the same. Little bits are different, but what is important is the same. And he tells them, the disciples ask, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when, you, and when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against, excuse me, it's, oh, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in divers places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. But take heed to yourself, for they shall deliver you up to the councils and in the synagogues. You shall be beaten, and you shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. And when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak, neither do you premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not you that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, and children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And then in Luke uh, chapter 21, I won't get into all of it. Because it's a pretty long chapter. But it starts at verse 8. Uh, let me see. There's somewhere that I saw where it talked about false prophets, which there are, you do see false prophets being, rising up. Yeah, we'll go ahead and leave it there. 
but you do see false prophets rising up. And what I mean by that is you have um, pastors, prophets, um, that have the pride flag all outside their church. And I've seen it here in Oregon. I've seen it at one church. I was driving by and I see pride flags and it really, it just threw me off. And you have certain pastors that are saying that, you know, you can be gay and be a Christian. Um, churches even had drag shows happening. Um, but basically teaching a false gospel. And what Jesus says um, to people that we read about in the gospel about sin, um, the woman at the well, um, the woman were the, um, what do you call them? The priests, no, not the priests, the scribes that they brought to Jesus, you know, for committing adultery. The thing is, Jesus said to them, you have been forgiven, go sin no more. He didn't accept their lifestyle. He didn't accept the woman at the well having husbands or having sleeping with men who are not her husband or the woman who was caught committing adultery. He wasn't like, I accept your lifestyle or I'm tolerant to your lifestyle. He points out their sin and says, you have been forgiven. Go and sin no more. And people twist that. People twist that scripture that says, you know, God made trans people. Uh, no, he did not. He made them male and female. And he created them in his image. He did not create trans people. You created this world, created it themselves because of the lies that the say that Satan and his his demons here that roam the earth, you know, to deceive people and to tell lies and um but you just you got to be ready like no one's promised tomorrow um but you know like I said um their pastors churches are picking and choosing what you know, is acceptable to them, what, what will bring more people to their church or whatever their reason is, but don't be deceived. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived or be conformed by this world. Um, be ready because it's going to get crazy, you know. No one knows when Jesus is coming back. No one knows the time, the day, the hour. Like, nobody knows. But we must be ready. We must be ready. Don't be deceived. Get into the Word. And if you don't know who Jesus is, if you've heard about him, if someone preached to you the gospel and you're still iffy, I pray that you make a decision because this decision is going to be the biggest decision of your life on whether you're going to continue to be a part of this world, continue to live your sinful life, or you're going to repent. And that's also one thing as well. A major thing is no one talks about repentance. It's like that word has disappeared. But we need to not forget repentance. Even the people in Acts, when they ask Peter, what shall we do to be saved? And this scripture just always hits home with me because it's true. Sorry, I'm going to open my door a little bit. Um, it's true because, and it's very point blank. They ask him, what shall we do to be saved? And he says, you must repent for the rem and, and be saved. Um, what does he say? Let me see the warmness is getting to me a little bit, but in the book of Acts, 
Okay. This was um, when 3,000 are converted. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Man and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So... It's very point blank, and you don't see people preaching repentance. You see more live how you want to live. If you feel this certain way, you know, go ahead and do it. And when I hear people say, like, yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I believe in Jesus. It's just kind of, for me, it's... I pray for them, I really do, because it's like, it's just crazy. <laughs> there was this one podcast that I was watching on YouTube, it's called um, The Whatever Podcast, and there was this woman who is on OnlyFans, and she talks about on there you know that she's a Christian and she has her own relationship with the Lord and what first thing that came to my mind is if you left that podcast got into a car accident and didn't survive you would have gone to hell here you are doing OnlyFans Saying you're a Christian, you haven't repented and you haven't given your life to Christ. You say that you do, but your actions speak another. I like to use myself as a prime example. That's like me saying, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But then two hours I go and I sleep with this merry man for money and then I go home. That's what that reminded me of. That's like me saying that. I sound like a big hypocrite. If I am fully in Christ and have repented of my sins and have been baptized I'm going to leave that whole dark life behind now doesn't mean I'm a perfect Christian doesn't mean I don't make mistakes from time to time because I'm not perfect like the only one who was ever perfect to walk this earth was Jesus Christ. He was sinless. He was perfect. He was holy. He knew no sin. I mean, you know, but I have repented of my ways, of my dark lifestyle that I lived. And the more, and I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. New things have come you know to the front so that's kind of like me saying that and I just wanted to just kind of message her or something and been like what if you would have drove home that night and got in an accident and died like you would have gone to hell because you are still are living this sinful life you have not given your whole life to Christ you've given parts of it you're still living in the world and I just, I pray for you. I pray that you would just open your eyes and know that being on that site is just not worth it. That money you make on there is just not worth it, like, at all. But that's the world that we're living in. You can be a Christian and still live how you want to live. It's crazy. It is crazy. But, just got to pray for those people. And if you don't know who Jesus is, I pray that you open your heart 
that you open your ears, open your eyes to wanting to know who he is, to wanting to get to ex just live in freedom, live in Christ, and become a new creation. Because when your eyes are open, when the enemy does not have a hold on you, you see such truth. And what you see in this world is good, and you see evil. There's no in-between. You see good, and you see evil, and you see a battle going on. And it's a spiritual war that we cannot see with our, our eyes, but it's happening. And we need to stand up as Christians. Um, we need to stand up, and whether it's making videos, um, or being out there preaching, um, but... We need to stand up against Satan's kingdom. And, uh, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it was a long one, but I had to put it out there. So if you stayed up to this point to watch it, thank you. Um, you can subscribe to me on my YouTube. I also post videos on there as well. Um, and if you want to share this video, please do. Have a great day and we will see you in our next one.